On this edition of Titans All Access, you'll meet the 2020 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners. Coach Mack takes us beneath the surface for an impressive breakdown of big plays. Tackle Dennis Kelly proves to be a great interview in this week's Nissan Insider. And John Robinson previews the Titans' trip to Jacksonville. Let's get to the season's final quarter as Titans All Access starts now. The monster, Derrick Henry. Sack! Rashawn Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. We welcome you to another edition of Titans All Access. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. We're glad you're here for what is always a big week for us. It's Jacksonville week. Longtime rivals. No matter the records, we love Jacksonville week. Oh, I love Jacksonville week. It's kind of like a college rivalry. It's very fun. It really is. <laughs> Another great thing that went on already this week, this past Tuesday, the 36th annual Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards were handed out right here at Nissan Stadium. That's exactly right. Ten winners. Can you break them down for everybody? So in the first division, Division One, there's six. Correct. In division Two, there's three. Correct. And then there's a kicker. And there's a kicker. So there are 10 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners. The ceremony this year a little different due to the differences in 2020. Not quite as big and as elaborate, but still awfully special as there were a total of 30 finalists who came with family and with coaches and with administrators, and they got to enjoy what is an incredibly special moment. And I know, Amy, for you, every single year, it's emotional. It's always emotional. I cry every single year, and this year was no different. It's so exciting watching these students be recognized for what they've accomplished throughout the year. And once you're a Mr. Football Award winner, you're always a Mr. Football Award winner. I just think that it's so great. So, yeah, I get a little teary. It's fine. Yeah, you'll be Mr. Football for your entire life when you take home the trophy. And we're so excited to be a part of this. The Tennessee Titans have actually been the namesake sponsor for 14 years. And it's something that everybody in our organization takes very seriously. Today we're here for the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards presentation. We've got 30 finalists from all over the state from uh, nine different classifications and a kicker classification. We're able to name one winner from each classification and uh, that winner is the Mr. Football for 2020. 2020 wasn't about game plans. It was about how to practice just to get to the games. Coaches, Thank you for holding it all together. We were just so unsure if we were going to be here today all together or, uh, you know, if we were going to have to do this via Zoom or something like that. It means a lot to these coaches. It means a lot to these kids. It means a lot to all the families that were able to join us here today and, you know, resemble some sort of normalcy to be here and honor these kids and all of their accomplishments on the field. High school athletics is extremely important to this organization. We have a responsibility as the NFL franchise in Tennessee to uh, make sure that we grow and develop the game of football. And uh, we have a lot of different community outreach projects and different activations and things that we work on in the community throughout the year. And uh, this is just one piece of that. But this is probably one of our favorite events of the year um, because it's just so nice to see all these talented kids and, and celebrate the things that they've done on the field. And finally, the biggest thanks goes to all of the players. You inspired us, you entertained us, and most of all, you impressed us with your incredible spirit. You gave us Friday nights in a year where Friday nights meant more than ever before. We thank you. During the course of this edition of Titans All Access, you will meet the 10 2020 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners. They get to introduce themselves. It's the best part of the show. It is the best <laughs> part of the show. There's no doubt about it. And we go back now to what the original premise of today's program is. It's Jacksonville week. 
We played these guys in week two. The Titans won 33 to 30 in what was a shootout. Jacksonville had a lot of offense in that game. They did, and uh, I'm excited to see what the Titans are able to do in this matchup, especially someone like Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill had a great game the first time around. In that game also, Derrick Henry found it to be tough sledding, 25 carries for just 84 yards. Yes, but you have to remember, Derrick Henry likes to show off when we go back to Jacksonville. I think that in round two against the Jacksonville Jaguars, he's going to show off just a little bit. Titans led for the majority of this game, but Jacksonville rallied to tie late. And then Steven Goskowski for the second time in seven days. What turns out to be a game-winning kick, this one from 49 yards. Still, there was time left for the Jaguars, and the Titans needed a defensive play. Do you remember how it ended? I do. Let's take a look in case you don't. Minshew pops, throws, ball batted in here. Intercepted! Intercepted! Yes! yes. Harold Landry, the man who batted it. Big Jeff, the man who caught it. Harold Landry and the Minshew show ends as the curtain goes down with 47 seconds to go. So on a day where the Titans defense wasn't great, the defense does come through in helping Tennessee get the victory. That moved Tennessee to 2-0. Can they go to 2-0 against Jacksonville this weekend? Well, we're going to get a scouting report. The Farm Bureau scouting report to be exact with General Manager John Robinson. That's next on Titans All Access. But as we go to break, Amy Wells, let's meet some of the 2020 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners. CJ Taylor, Warren County High School, quarterback safety. I'm committed to Vanderbilt. Deidre Pennington, Evangelical Christian School, D tackle, O tackle. I'm committed to Clemson University. Troy Parker Hughes, Elizabethan, wide receiver safety. I'm committed. This is Coach Mack. Welcome to Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. Today, we're going to look at four plays in the Titans-Cleveland Browns game. We're going to look at two really good combat catches, one by A.J. Brown and one by Corey Davis. And then we're going to look at two plays by Michael Pruitt. Two touchdowns, one in a conventional way, one in a fairly unconventional way. First play we're here, this is early in the second quarter. This is play action. You see the switch release outside the deep, deep post. Watch the switch release by the two players in the slot. Excellent play action pocket. Look at the pocket. Time for Ryan Tannehill to set up and throw a combat catch right down the middle to A.J. Brown. Contested catch, big receivers going up, very high, high point the ball, a physical, physical catch by a very physical receiver, A.J. Brown. Next, we're looking at first and 10 here. Play action out of I formation. Ryan Tannehill now sets up in the pocket. The immediate throw is not there. Starts to move, very effective on the run. And then Corey Davis does a tremendous job of staying in phase with his quarterback and uncovering. Once his quarterback starts to escape the pocket, Corey Davis stays alive, uncovers. Watch him go up high, make a combat catch, absorbs a big hit, stays on his feet, touchdown that came in an 11 catch 182 yard day for Corey Davis. Next we're going to look at watch Cleveland walk the Sam linebacker up on the tight end in a butch alignment. We get motion now out of the backfield to create a quads look. Watch the tackle block out on the linebacker that was covering Pruitt and then Pruitt does a beautiful switch release up underneath touchdown Michael Pruitt who is making an appearance after his three-week absence due to injury. Next play we're going to look at, second down, second and 10. Michael Pruitt will now be involved in this play also, but he's not the primary receiver. An immediate throw, A.J. Brown in. The ball is now stripped from A.J. Brown, but Michael Pruitt, great effort, great awareness, follows the play all the way to the end. Very athletic move, scoop and score, touchdown on the fumble recovery, a two touchdown day for Michael Pruitt in his return to action for the Tennessee Titans. When Titans All Access continues, General Manager John Robinson joins us with this week's Farm Bureau Insurance Scouting Report. But first, Let's meet a few more of the 2020 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners. Hunter Frame, South Pittsburgh High School, running back, defensive back, uncommitted. 
Prince Colley, David Crocker High School, linebacker, University of Notre Dame. Tee my drink, Brentwood Academy, kicker. It's time now for the Farm Bureau Insurance Scouting Report. Jacksonville, the opponent. John Robinson, the Titans general manager, going to help us out here. Going to see a different quarterback this time around. Mike Glennon expected to be the starter for the Jags. How are they different with Glennon at quarterback over Gardner Minshew? Yeah, I mean, I think with, you know, with Gardner, we, we've seen him, you know, a couple of times in, in the past. Now, certainly there's there's a run element to his game. I mean, you know, Mike's more of a, a big pocket passer, but he's been there since September. He's played a lot and started a lot of snaps in the NFL, and he's doing a good job of, you know, putting the offense in position to move the football down the field. Ask you, too, about their receivers. Whomever the quarterback is, certainly some talented guys to throw to for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, no question, Mike. A lot, lot of talent at those, you know, offensive weapon positions, if you will. DJ Chart continues to improve. He's he's big, he's long, he's fast. He can stretch the, you know, the field and, and make plays, uh, big plays, chunk plays for that offense. I think Cole's having a heck of a season for him. The other rookie, Johnson, out of Texas, had a heck of a catch against uh, the Vikings. Big, long target. And they're getting these tight ends involved in the game as well. James Robinson, their running back, is on pace to be the most productive, undrafted rookie in NFL history. Why has he been so good so fast for the Jaguars? Yeah, he's got a really good running style. He runs behind his pads well. For a younger runner, he, he's patient. He, he doesn't try to press the hole too quickly. He's got some patience to let the blocking schemes develop. He's got good power. He runs with urgency, like I said. He's got good speed in the open field. He's good balance, keeps his legs going on contact. He's a tough guy to bring down. Just having a heck of a year, close to 1,000 yards for him there in Jacksonville. John, Jacksonville hasn't been winning lately, but they've been playing everybody tough. What have they been doing so well to stay in games and at least give themselves a chance to win? Yeah, I think offensively that they're staying on track. You know, they, they've got that running game established. They've got things set up off of that, whether it's play actions or, or, or boots. They've got guys that can get open and catch. The offensive line is giving Mike time to throw the football and creating run lanes for, for Robinson. And the defense is still flying around. They're creating turnovers to get that offense extra possessions throughout the course of the game. It's going to be a big test for us. John, thank you so much for your time. Good luck against the Jags, and we appreciate you joining us for the Farm Bureau Insurance Scouting Report of Jacksonville. Always. Thanks, Mike. Dennis Kelly is large, but he doesn't act like he has to be in charge. One of the best guys on the team, number 71, Dennis Kelly, is our Nissan Insider next on Titans All Access. Time now for the Nissan Insider. It's right tackle Dennis Kelly. Amy Wells, give me three facts about number 71. Oh, this will be fun. Okay, fact number one, he has three daughters. Okay. Fact number two, for my cause, my cleats, his main thing that he advocates for is food allergies. Okay, that's good. And number three, oh, his brother's the offensive coordinator for the Houston Texans. Hmm, that's great. None of those things are in this week's Nissan Insider, but it's good nonetheless. Dennis Kelly. What was that? Dennis Kelly, Titans offensive tackle. Good to see you. Good to see you, Mike. Thanks for having me. All right, so December football. It, it, is, it is that time. Dennis Kelly, Chicago native. Do you like December football or are you like my wife who's from the same area and hates December, January, and February? I like December football. You know, cold doesn't really bother me. I obviously like to credit the, the Windy City to that. You know, the cold up there hurts more than anything. You know, obviously December football, January into February, that's meaningful football. And so besides the fact that it's it's cold. It's also, uh, you know, the games are a lot more intense, a lot more competitive, you know, a lot more fun because of it. Now, is the offensive line rule you can only wear sleeves in the cold if you wear sleeves in September? I had heard that. I, I think uh, Roos did that here. I think that was his rule. Where I've been, it do what you need to do to be ready to play. And so, you know, growing up, you would always see the old line and like the, the New England when they had their run and Matt Light obviously being a Purdue guy. 
they'd have their AFC Conference Championship game and it's negative zero or whatever it was and, and they're all sleeveless and you're like, wow, that's awesome. God, it's gotta be cold though. So, <laughs> you know, at least for me, when you're playing, you don't really feel it that much. You don't really notice it. You notice it more on the sidelines than you would on the field. Does the offensive line have more rules than any other position group on an NFL team? Yeah, I would think so. Just because there's, you know, obviously at least five of us at a time. And, you know, if I'm doing something differently, then that affects the person next to me and then potentially the person next to him. And, and it can go all the way down or it might just go to two people or just three people. You know, there's offenses that has a call for literally every single situation that there could be. And then there's some offenses that are just kind of a blanket. This covers it all. Let's just go left, go right or, or, or whatever. But uh, yeah, I think with a combination of everyone trying to work together in the offensive line, I think it kind of takes cake. Nate Davis has been a player that Mike Vrabel has been complimentary of with a lot of improvement in his second year. How gratifying has it been to you to see Nate grow up playing the position right beside you? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, Nate's playing really well. You can tell he the confidence is building even more and he's becoming a really good player for us. You know, obviously the last play of the game against Baltimore just it's, it's coming to my mind because it's fresh, but you know, he made a, a, a huge block there and you can see as he sees Derek's pulling away, if you watch the film, you can see Nate's, Nate celebrate, and you can tell that he's understanding, he, he's buying in, he's getting that confidence, like I mentioned, and, and, and it's showing. Dennis, what has it been like for you, in terms of being gratifying, that this year you came into the year as a starter, you've been a starter, and at age 30, you're now one of the guys, not one of the guys hoping to be one of the guys. Yeah, it's definitely it's a cool feeling. You know, I always I've always said that you play, especially at this level, you want to you want to be able to play and you want to be able to show that you belong up here. And you know, it's, it's taken a little bit longer than I think I initially uh, had hoped, but showing that I can play more than a handful of snaps or more in you know emergency duty, I think is one of those things that. I'll be able to look back and be like, at least, I, at least I was able to show that I did that. You know, there isn't that moment of like, you know, if I only got my chance or if only, you know, there's no kind of, not necessarily regret, but that looking back of like, you know, I never got a full, full crack at it. What are you most proud of in your NFL career so far? I would say, I, I'd like to say that the, the trust that the teams have put into me. You know, obviously I've been a backup most of my career and when I would come in, the teams wouldn't change the game plan because they trusted that I would come in and, and do my job and being reliable and kind of being a, you know, a steady presence. There's something to be said about that to be a reliable player for your team. And so I, I take a lot of pride in that. I thought you were going to say the touchdown catches. I, I really, <laughs> you got to be proud of that. I mean, you've scored touchdowns in the NFL, not a touchdown, mm -hmm. multiple touchdowns. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, th those are cool moments and those are definitely things, you know, to tell stories about. But, you know, for me, it's, again, it's one of those things where being an offensive lineman, you know, touchdowns are cool, but maybe it's just the way I was brought up and the way I've, I've turned into the man that I am. I just want people to be able to trust me and, and count on me. Mike Keith didn't ask a single interesting question, and it still turned out to be a really good interview with Dennis Kelly. Hmm. All right, when we come back, we're going to have Mike Keith's keys. Hmm. But as we head to break, here's some more Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners. I'm Griffin Sweeney. I'm from Davidson Academy, and I play running back. The 2020 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football for Class 2A, Kalik Ganaway, Peabody High School. Gray Carroll, Alcoa High School, defensive end, D tackle, committed to Georgia Tech. The 2020 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football for Division II Class 3A is Dallin Hayden Christian Brothers. On the next Titans All Access, he's having a career season in a year that has been incredibly challenging. Wide receiver Corey Davis visits with Mike Keith to talk faith, football, and family a special Nissan Insider, Corey Davis, next week on Titans All Access. Mike Keith, the moment we've all been waiting for, your keys to beating the Jacksonville Jaguars. Arthur one, please. That's key number one. I'm talking about A.J. Brown. He didn't play against the Jaguars back in September. He was out with injury. It'd be a nice week for him to show up 
and really be big in this football game. Lots of times he explodes in these situations. Not having played him the first time, well, we'll see if he can't make up for that in Jacksonville on Sunday. We had definitely use an A.J. Brown explosion mm -hmm. this week. Give me key number two. Key number two is the secondary for the Titans. Got to play better than they did last week. Jacksonville, as you heard from John Robinson, has some really good receivers. We know what they did in the first game against the Titans. This secondary has to tighten up and play a good game this week in Jacksonville. Key number two is the secondary. That's clever. Give me the last one. Uh, the, the last one is the Jacksonville guy. Maybe more fully put, the Uli guy. I'm talking about Derrick Henry. Mentioned in the first segment, didn't have a big game the first time against these guys. Whenever he doesn't have a big game against a division team, the next game is usually pretty big. How about a little homecoming, a little outstanding performance from the double deuce himself. I'm talking about the monster Derrick Henry. He's key number three for me in this game. Mike Keith, I'm already fired up for this game. I'm excited. It's going to be good. I've seen everyone in this series, and it is so much fun because, as you said earlier, it's like a college rivalry. Records sort of go out the window. There are going to be some fireworks. There's going to be some excitement. And when we kick it off at 12.02 Central Time on Titans Radio, Tennessee Jacksonville always means something. It really does to the first place Titans. We hope you'll join us. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for watching Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.